Alrighty guys, I'm on the eve of Three Rivers Comic Con. Definitely uh, looking forward to that tomorrow. But I'm going to show some books that I picked up at a small show about a weekend or two weekends ago. Uh, this is going to be one killer, all filler, rest filler. <laughs> Probably may get my uh, name of this title of this video. Uh, but next week, uh, definitely want to tune in to next week. I'm going to show the, I don't know what you want to call them, non-filler books. I don't know, whatever. But before we get to that, we got to get to our two from the tomb. So a couple weeks ago, I was making a mention of, uh, Tim Sale, uh, rest in peace, saying about how he, uh, is really hit or miss for me. And I didn't know where exactly where that started from. Until the uh, the influencer, aka Mr. Rigor Mortis, eighty six, pointed out something, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, and that he was exactly right. It was from this book right here. But when he did this book, it really turned me off. I mean, this is <laughs> how one book can influence your opinion of somebody, and this book did it for me, for him. Uh, you know, Superman. For all seasons, this is the deluxe edition by uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. But uh, Mr. Rigor Mortis is right. Uh, it's just the uh, how light it is. Tim Sale reminds me of somebody that does, you know, night stuff, uh, stuff with different like you know, shades of gray almost. <laughs> but it's really turned me off from him for years. Uh, I do, I did love uh, some of his other stuff, but it was like this series, and I believe he did a Captain America one that I really didn't care for either, that he drew, if I remember correctly. But yeah, this is like, this whole thing just turned me off from him at the time. Of course, now, you know, looking back at his whole career, I really like his stuff, a lot of his stuff that he did. Um... Like the other book for the two for the tomb so he yeah this is dark victory and you're gonna notice a big difference you know how uh you know, this is the kind of stuff that i always thought he excelled at i mean these pages are just yeah. this country you know good old farm stuff you know i don't think he was set up for that he wasn't built for that i mean yeah Granted, if you keep turning out the same stuff, everybody's going to accuse you of being, you know, one-hit wonder or whatever. Or one-trick pony, I should say. But, I mean, I absolutely love the the stuff he did with, uh, like, The Long Halloween and this book, Dark Victory. I mean, it's just so good. <laughs> So I wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Rigamortis86 for pointing out what I failed to understand <laughs> where my uh, on the fence about Tim Sale came from, and he's absolutely correct. It came did come from this book, um, and like I said, that I believe there was another Captain America or there was a Captain America book that really just finished the, the put me on the fence with him but when he does the darker stuff I'm a huge fan <laughs> all right so like I said this is gonna be a one killer the rest all filler <laughs> but I wanted to show this one uh, killer book because there's a chance I might be doing another vid thinking about turning this into a uh, CBCS or whatever one of those ones that uh and they're uh, yeah I believe it's CBCS they uh they're gonna have a booth set up at the uh, Three Rivers Comic Con tomorrow so I wanted to get this uh taken care of but I was at that show and I picked this up uh from a guy I know uh, I have no reason to doubt it's not legit but I want to get it uh ver authenticated or verified or whatever the hell that's one the 
that uh, CBCS does, or whatever it's called. Uh, it wasn't witnessed, of course. So there's an authentic, verified, something like that. But it was... Uh, it's the Millennium Edition of The Dark Knight Returns, signed by allegedly Frank Miller. <laughs> and those that have followed this channel... Um, know that uh, I hold uh, Frank Miller in high regard. He's one of the few people that I will actually pay money to, you know, I'm talking, you know, rock star money to go see, um, you know, to get a signature from. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this dude's been around for decades and wrote some of the most, uh, some of my favorite books. But yeah, I'm hoping that it comes back uh, authentic. But I looked at, I, I, I did so much research at the show on this. I'm like pulling up on my phone, like different CDC witnessed and CBCS verified. I'm like going like line by line looking at this. Uh, and I'm 95% sure it's legit. I mean, granted in an industry where there are artists, uh, how easy it could be for them to, somebody to forge that, you know. But I have no... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't pay thirty dollars for it. I ended up getting it for twenty. So that was the, even made the deal even sweeter. So we're gonna see. So I'm gonna make it a future vid. I'm gonna do another video about this, but I won't show it for a couple months. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, an anti slab guy uh, getting a slab done. So we'll make that a video. All right, guys. Here comes the rest of the filla. To me, I love I love filler books. I mean, I, like I said, I've all, I always say it all the time. I can only see Hulk 181 so many times. <laughs> when people uh, show that stuff on YouTube, I, I, I like more like watching their reactions than the books, you know, and how happy they are sometimes or, you know, uh, the story behind getting that book. But, I mean, if I never see Hulk 181 ever again, it'll be too soon. But I did manage to pick up some more of my Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing, <laughs> no pun intended, how I have a Spider-Man collection that I never really even uh, put any thought into. I got over like a hundred and I think ten books now of Amazing Spider-Man. That's just not even, even trying to collect. It's just buying them in dollar bins. And I, all these books here were a dollar each. Because if you bought so many, they ended up, it was like they were two dollars at first. But if you bought over like a certain amount, they go, went down to a dollar. But what's cool is uh, they had a ton of the Eric Larson run of Amazing Spider-Man that I needed. Um, this is issue 327 with Magneto on the cover. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy Eric Larson's run uh, of the books that I have. You know, <laughs> it's not easy to follow Todd McFarlane, uh, but to do it twice is just uh, crazy. I mean, just imagine if Mark Bagley uh, followed Todd McFarlane. I don't think it would have went as smoothly as this did. Uh, and I love this era of Eric Larson's work, too. So, let me take a look inside. Got the thick black borders there. <laughs> it was almost like it didn't even miss a beat when uh, Todd McFarlane, Eric Larson took over for Todd on this book before Todd went to this, this uh, Spider-Man title. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm only down to, I only need like two or three more issues of the uh, Eric Larson's Amazing Spider-Man run. Uh, my intention is to go all the way to the end of... Uh, that was at Maximum Carnage event and just stopped there. I mean, no, uh, but I'm going to try to go back as far as possible as I can. I ended up picking up issue 340, 341, and these books are all in pretty decent decent shape. I'd say very fine mm -hmm. to near mint minus on all of them. Issue 348. And 349. I still need to replace. They had a, a copy of issue 350, 
But with these books, I only want very, fi very fine plus or near mint minus at the minimum for uh, modern books. Or not modern books. Geez, these are like 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, there's Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for Copper Age books, we'll call them. But uh, but yeah, for a bucket piece, Amazing Spider-Man. They had issue 350, and it just there was a couple of spine ticks. I'm like, I already got a messed up copy. I don't need another one. Another series that I'm trying to complete, and I'm getting pretty darn close. One of my favorite Marvel titles is Howard the Duck. With me and Gene uh, doing the art inside, and uh, let's take a quick look at the inside here. And Steve Leo Alo Aloha. Yeah, easy for me to say. I really like his inks on this this book. Uh, he almost makes uh, Gene Collins uh, almost like a Bernie Wright Wrighton esque. I guess it looks like almost like Bernie Wrightson's like uh, not the same style or anything, but it's got that same vibe going for it. Yeah, so this is one of my uh, Marvel books that I actually collect. <laughs> but yeah, I just love how the layout in this book is. Yeah, like right here, man, this is just... That whole face, <laughs> the shading in it is just insane. But yeah, I'm only... Uh, I think I'm... I still need the first issue, so that's the, the big one I have to get out of the way. But, uh, yeah, I picked up issue number four, issue number five. So I believe I'm maybe about ten issues away from completing this run. Issue 11. It just cracks me up. Issue 22, part of the uh, Star Wars uh, spoof. There you go. Star Wars. <laughs> Issue 28. Yes, yeah, Carmen Infantino. But you can tell, like, you know, the, the later issues without. Uh, Steve Lee Alo Aloha, um, his dark inks and stuff like that, just, uh, it's missing something. Yeah, with uh, the follow-up to this uh, series, uh, Destroy Your Duck. <laughs> if you haven't read that, uh, try to hunt it down, hunt down a copy of that, or hunt down that series. Actually, uh, that was issue twenty-nine, and this is issue uh, thirty-one. Dr. Bong. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the last uh, filler I have is I've been trying to put together Wolverine. I guess it'll be the second series. The one with uh, the patch on it. Uh, that run, I think it's volume two. Because volume one, I guess, would be the Frank Miller four, four issue limited series. But uh, I'm trying to get issues 1 through 50. Uh, I really like that era of Wolverine. Uh, so I picked up issue number 25. These were This was a dollar. Uh, Jim Lee cover.
Yeah, I just I just dig Wolverine out in the wild, man. It just like it's, those are my favorite stories, you know, with uh, him with all these animals and stuff like that, and just like a lot of times it's brutal. <laughs> I didn't become a, become a huge fan of Wolverine till this series came out. Uh, just never cared for at the time for X Men at all. But yeah, it's, it started growing on me a little bit. But uh, this era of Wolverine will always be uh, just one of my favorites because there was a lot of uh, like ninja stuff, uh, samurais, and just all kind of uh, books that uh, were real hot in the eighties for kids like me <laughs> but I uh, got issued like I said 25 picked up 33 just love that cover man <laughs> right out the <laughs> I believe this is Mark Silvestri that was on this one yeah because he did the, the later issues because Oh man, Splatterhouse. I totally forgot about that game on Turbo Graphics. <laughs> yeah, this is <clears throat> This is the art I remember. Just like seeing like stuff like this. Yeah, but uh, issue number 33, 34, 35. Love this cover, man. <laughs> 36. And last, 37. So I believe I got issues, most of issues 1 through 40, and I still want to kind of get the uh, 9 issues in the 40s. Because I have issue 50, the one with the die cut cover. But. The findings were a buck each. I mean, it was just really cool. All right, guys. Next week's vid should be uh, pretty damn good. About as good as, good as this one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, next week I'll have my non-filler books, I will call it. And definitely have uh what you read in pz that week i'm probably not gonna make it to my shop because i'm not sure if i'm gonna have any freaking money left <laughs> that's all right We're, it's all good all right guys i'll talk to you in the next time check out all the links down below sub those guys up if you haven't yet uh check out their channels support channels that support you see you next time